She's the one the spinsters recommend Just name the kind of man your sister wants And she'll snatch him up Don't forget to bring your maiden aunt And she'll match him up Call on Dolly If your eldest daughter needs a friend Hand in 
So this is how you thank me for your promotion. No, you'll attend the store as usual. Now get back to work. And don't forget to put the lid back on the sheep dip. Evening's off. Marrying artists? Foolishness. 99% of the people in this world are fools. And the rest of us are in great danger of contamination. <laughs> Why, even I was once young, which was foolish. And I got married, which was foolish. And I was poor, which was more foolish than anything else. And then my wife died, which was foolish of her. <laughs> I became older, which was sensible of me, and I became rich, friendless, and mean, which in Yonkers is about as far as you can go. Now I know what you're wondering, why a man of such good sense would be doing anything as foolish as getting married again. The answer is simple. This house, without a woman, would be an empty shell. And pretty dirty, too. It takes a woman, all powdered and pink, to joyously clean out the drain in the sink. And it takes an angel with bungled and lashes and softest and fingers for dumping the ashes. Yes, it takes a woman, a dainty woman, a sweetheart, a mistress, a wife, Oh, yes, it takes a woman, a fragile woman, to bring you the sweet things in life. <laughs> the fair young maiden who's constantly there for cleaning the bluing and chewing the mare. And it takes a female for setting the table and weaning the currency and cleaning the stable. Yes, it takes a woman, a dainty woman, a sweetheart, a mistress, a wife. Oh, yes, it takes a woman, a fragile woman, to bring you the sweet things in life. Anybody. 
No, there's no truth in it. Just one word of advice, Mr. Vandegel, to eat out. Now, Mrs. Levi, you don't mean to say that Mrs. Malloy... I meant to say nothing, Mr. Vandegel, but just a word of friendly advice. Keep away from the chowder. By the way, she's ordered her wedding gown. You should see it. Beautiful. Black. <laughs> well, as I was saying, Mr. Vandegelder, congratulations on your forthcoming nuptials, and may you rest in, I mean, may guardian angels watch over you both, particularly at dinner. Now, see here, Mrs. Levi, you introduced me to Mrs. Malloy, and I, did, and I intend on calling upon her this afternoon, as arranged. Very well, Mr. Vandegelder, then I guess there's nothing else for me to do but to go back to New York and tell the other girl, the heiress, not to wait. What was that? Nothing. A word. Heiress. Particulars, Mrs. Levi. Demand particulars. Her name. Her name. Her name. Um, blah. Money. Ernestina Money. What a lovely, lovely name. Picture, if you will. Hair as shiny as a newly minted dime. Eyes as big, round as silver dollars. Skin as soft and mossy as an old greenback. I can feel her now. Age 19. Wait, 102. Waste 47. Waste 47? That's with the money belt. Now, I can arrange for you to meet Miss Ernestina this very afternoon. I haven't got time. I've got to bring my nurse, my niece, Ermengarde, to New, to New York until she, she forgets a certain Ambrose Kemper. I can do that for you, Mr. Vandegelder. I know just how to handle such things. And then I'm watching the 14th Street Parade. What an amazing coincidence. Guess who's been chosen to ride on the main float? The spirit of 14th Street. Miss Money! My mother was a cash, you know. <laughs> All right, I'll meet Miss Money at the parade, but I intend on calling upon Mrs. Malloy first. Oh, dear. What races you make me run? Very well. I'll meet you on that hedge outside of Mrs. Malloy's hat shop at 2.30 as usual. <clears throat> now, suppose I decide against Mrs. Malloy, and I don't like Miss Money neither. Well, then I happen to have one more name on my list. A name I know as well as my own. Well, let's not go into detail about that now. I'm sure it'll come up by itself in good time, but wait till you see Ernestina Horace. A vision, a dream. It takes a woman all powdered in pink to joyously clean out the drain in the sink. And it takes an angel with long golden lashes and soft rested fingers for dumping the ashes. Yes, it takes a woman. You know, Ephraim, I think I'm going to have that room done over in blue wallpaper. Yes. In blue. Armengard, Avril, come on out here. We've got plans to make. Chief clerk. Promoted from chief clerk to chief clerk. Oh, and if I'm good, in ten years I'll be promoted to chief clerk again. <laughs> Thirty-three years old, and I still haven't had an evening off. When am I going to live? Well, you can live on holidays, Cornelius. <clears throat> did you forget what we did last Christmas? All oh, those tomato cans went bad and exploded. And then we had to spend the whole evening cleaning the place up. You call that living? No. Barnaby, you and I are going to New York. You mean close the store? Uh-huh. Cornelius, we can't. We'll have to. Some rotten tomato cans are going to explode. Holy cabooses! How do you know? Gonna light a candle on you, and that's how I know. They'll make such a stench, but we'll have to close the place for 24 hours. That'll get us an evening off. We're going to New York, Barnaby, and we're gonna live. We're gonna have a good meal, we're gonna spend our money, we're gonna get arrested. Holy cabooses! And one more thing, Barnaby, we're not coming home until each of us have kissed a girl. Cornelius, we can't do that. You don't know any girls. I'm 33 years old. I've got to start sometime. I'm only 17, Cornelius. It isn't so urgent for me. New York, Barnaby. Elevated trains. The lights of Broadway. The stuffed whale at Barnum's Museum. A stuffed whale? A stuffed whale. What do you say? Yes, Cornelius, yes! Financially independent. I know. I'll find you a job. Can you dance? 
I'm an artist, Mrs. Levi. I paint. Well, then, my car. Mrs. Dolly Levi, painters taught how to dance. Now, there's a man, Rudolph Reisenweber, at the Harmonia Gardens restaurant on 14th Street. I'll give you a note for him, and we'll see if he can't have you both entered in the dance competition tonight. The prize is a week's engagement and a solid gold cup. All the cups we won, Ephraim and me. Hold on, Mrs. Levi. No fiancé of mine is going to set foot in a cafe. <laughs> and I don't mind saying, I'm surprised that you have acquaintances in a place like that. Not acquaintances, Mr. Kemp, but friends. Dear friends from days gone by. My late husband, Ephraim Levi, believed in life and any place you could find it. Cafes, ballrooms, yes, even theaters. Even when times were hard. Every Saturday night, like clockwork. Down the stairs at the Harmony Gardens restaurant we came, Ephraim and me. Yes, it's all very welcome down like clockwork, Mrs. Levi. But you're asking Ermengarde to work there. <laughs> it's the only way to show Horace and Miguel that we mean business. Now, you go to the Harmony Gardens restaurant this afternoon and tell them Mrs. Levi sent you. And incidentally, tell Rudolph that Dolly's coming back. And she wants a table for two and a chicken for eight o'clock tonight. All right, Cornelius. That bottom row looks good. Now. Hold the candle under the ones on top. Oh, but not too close. Those look just about ready to burst. Oh, oh they come bruises. At least I can smell that from up here. Get dressed, Marty. We're going to New York. Out there, there's a world outside of Yonkers. Way out there, beyond this hick town, Barnaby. There's a slick town, Barnaby, out there, full of shine and full of sparkle. Close your eyes and see it glisten, Barnaby. Listen, Barnaby. There's lots of world out there. Get out the brilliantine and dime cigars. We're gonna find adventure in the evening air. Girls in white in a perfume night where the lights are bright as the stars. Put on your Sunday clothes, we're gonna ride through town in one of those new horse drawn open cars. We'll see the shows at Del Monaco's and we'll close the town in a whirl. And we won't come home until we kiss the girl. Put on your Sunday clothes when you feel down and out. Strut down the street and have your picture toy. Just like a dream, your spirit seems to turn all about. That Sunday shine is a certain. That you feel as fine as you look. <laughs> Think your parents all the world is all a smile. That makes you feel brand new down to your toes. Get out your bed as your hat and leather, your beads and buckles and bows. For the sun will one day. 
catch the gentleman's eye, and he might smile and take me by the hand this summer, making me recall how lovely love can be. Mr. Hackle, 
what did you say, Yonkers? Oh, yes, ma'am, uh, Yonkers. And forgive me for saying this, but you should see Yonkers. Uh, by that, I mean, perhaps uh, Mr. Malloy would like to see Yonkers. Oh, I'm a widow, Mr. Hackle. Oh, you hear that, Barnaby? She's a widow. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> Well, I'm sure Mr. Malloy would have loved to see Yonkers, especially in that hat. On you, of course, not on Mr. Malloy. May he rest in peace. You're Catholic, aren't you? Don't worry about that. I can change. Uh... <laughs> Mrs. Malloy, if you happen to have a Sunday free, I'd love to show you Yonkers from top to bottom. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Hackle, I might be there sooner than you think. You might. You see, I have a friend who lives in Yonkers. You do? Perhaps you know him. Perhaps we do. Oh, it's always so foolish to ask in cases like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Mr. Vandergilder. <laughs> Horace Vandergilder? Oh, Vandergilder's a and Do you know him? No, no, no. no, no. Mrs. Malloy, a fine man. Uh, only one flaw, as far as I know. Uh, he's hard as nails. Cornelius, I think. Oh, I, I think wonder if your friend might like this one. Look out! Gentlemen, what are you doing? Begging your pardon, Mrs. Malloy. Come out of there this minute! Mrs. Malloy, we'll explain later, please. We're as innocent as can be, Mrs. Malloy. Not really. Mr. Hackle, Mr. Tucker, I insist that you both come out there or I'll be forced to. <clears throat> Mr. Vandergelder. Mrs. Malloy. I don't suppose you've seen Dolly Levi around, have you? She was supposed to meet me on that bench five minutes ago. Well, she'll just have to go looking for me if she comes. When I make an appointment, I'd like people to be on time. For you, for present. There, chocolate covered peanuts. Unshell. That's the expensive kind. <laughs> Did I just see you talking to two men? Men? Men, Mr. Vandergelder? What would men be doing in a lady's hat shop? Well, now, let's go back to my work for my snow ice for you to see it. I saw it last week. So you did. Well, Mr. Vandergelder, what's new in the hay and beef business? I understand you have three friends, all hard as nails. I mean... What are you talking about? Yonkers! I hear it's a very beautiful city. Who's been talking to you about Yonkers? Nobody. A friend. What friend? Well, you see, he... He? A customer, Mr. Vandergelder. Something quite well to do, as a matter of fact. He was in here buying hats for ladies. Perhaps you know him, although it's usually silly to ask in cases like that. <laughs> it's a Mr. Cornelius Hackle. Did you say Hackle? Why, yes. He's my head clerk, that's all. Mrs. Malloy, I demand an explanation. And I'm going to give it to you. Why shouldn't she know Cornelius Hackle? Everybody in New York knows Cornelius Hackle. Why, well, he's at the opera and all the fashionable homes. Why, well, he's at the Harmony Gardens restaurant three times a week. Impossible. He's only got $146.35, and I keep it in my safe. Mr. Vandergelder, you're killing me. <laughs> he's one of the Hackles. They built the canal. Which one? The Hammock. Both. <laughs> well, it is the same man. Who took the horses out of Jenny Lynn's carriage and pulled her through the street? Cornelius Hackle. And who dressed up as a waiter at the Fifth Avenue Hotel and dropped an oyster down Mrs. Anson? Oh, I can't say it, but it was Cornelius. <laughs> He's a playboy of New York. Now, don't deny, Irene. I can tell you would take it with him just like everybody else. Dolly, what are you saying? I've only seen him once in my life, Dolly. Really? Yes, me, of, of course. course.
Mrs. Levi, come along. Cornelius is taking us down to the 14th Street Parade. Everybody will be marching. Why, Irene, you're crying. Oh, Dolly, the world is full of wonderful things. Come with us, Dolly. I will, Irene. I will. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna go and taste Saturday's high life. Before the parade passes by, I'm gonna get some life back into my life. I'm ready to move out in front. I've had enough of just passing by life. With the rest of them, with the best of them, I'm gonna hold my head up high. For I've got to go again, I've got to drive again, I'm gonna feel my heart coming alive again. Before the parade passes by, the crowd. Oh, you couldn't miss her if you tried. 
All right, I'll be there, but only because I already paid for the introduction, and I may as well just get my money's worth. <laughs> but from here on, you here on in, you are discharged, my marriage counselor. You hear me, Dolly Levi? From now on, you're a woman just like any other. What are you doing? Don't touch that. What are you doing? Where are we going? Stop! I did not allow this. Stop! Ephraim, he's as good as mine. I'm gonna raise the roof. I'm gonna carry on. Give me an old trombone. Give me an old baton before the parade. Inside. Yes, Mr. Hackle? 
May I put my arm around your waist? Yes, Mr. Hackle, but I might as well warn you, a corset is a corset. <laughs> to your uncle that we mean business. <laughs> now can you weep a little faster? You're throwing me off step. <laughs> faster! <laughs> That's it!
Barbie, give a nickel to the band leader and tell him to play to a wild rose. We want music while we dine.
I demand an explanation of... Ernestina! Exactly! Ernestina, whom I trust is! She wanted to do the hoochie coochie. <laughs> well, she was always artistic. Or I'm going to have our table moved down front. There's one dance in particular I want you to see. And let's not say another word about it. I'm as shocked as you are. I can't eat a thing. What have you ordered? What you wanted? Chicken. No, see here, Dolly, about that hoochie coochie girl. Did you say a chicken? Oh, I don't think I could face a chicken. Not today, not after what happened. Good. Cancel the chicken. And bring a turkey! Now what are you doing? Nothing. I'm just looking the place over, getting acquainted with my surroundings. That's the problem with you, Dolly. Always wanting to know everything. Always sticking your nose into other people's business. Anybody who married you would be as nervous as a cat. What was that you're saying? I said anybody who married you would... Horace Vandergelda, get that idea out of your head this minute. I'm surprised you even mentioned such a thing. Understand once and for all that I have no intention of marrying you. I didn't mean that. Well, I certainly do hope not. Horace Vandergelda, you go your way and I'll go mine. I'm not so my green one whose head can be turned on to chocolate-covered peanuts on shelves. Why, the idea of you even suggesting such a thing? Mrs. Levi, you misunderstood me. Well, I certainly do hope not. But if I did have any intention of marrying again, it would be to a far more pleasure-loving man than you. But let's not discuss it anymore. Here's the latest with our food. I'll serve Mr. Van der Gelder Rudolph. Now, as I said before, you go your way, and I'll go mine. Now, start right in on the wine. I'm sure you'll feel better at once. Now, here's some white meat for you. Lighter than air it is, and some dumplings, and some giblets, very tender, and very good for you. Now, as I said before, you go your way, and I'll go mine. But there's one thing I'm going to say. I didn't bring the matter up at all. One more thing I'm going to say before you forget all about it. It's true, I'm a woman who likes to know everything that's going on. Who likes to manage things, but I would not like to manage anything that's out of control as your household. You'll have to do it yourself, God helping you. It's not out of control. Very well. Let's not discuss it anymore. Here, Horace, have some beets that good. I don't like beets. That's nice. <laughs> no, Horace, a complaining frog can friend so like you is no companion for me. Here, now, you salt your beets and I'll salt mine. Well, stop saying that. I won't say another word. Good. Except that Horace, at your age, you should enjoy hearing the honest truth. My age, my age. You're always talking about my age. Well, I don't know what your age is, but I do know that up and yon goes with bad food and bad tablet. You'll double it in six <sighs> months. Here, Horace, have some beets. They're good. I, uh, <laughs> I don't like beets. I hate beets. That's nice. <laughs> now, dig right in. Yes, the pity of it all is you could be a completely charming, witty, annual man if you wanted to. I don't want to be charming. But you are looking at you, you can't help it. Now sit down and let's not discuss it anymore. But before we change the subject, there's one thing I am going to say. I don't want to hear it. And you're wasting your time, Dolly Levi. I won't ask you to marry me. I suppose that means you want me to ask you then. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Horace. I'm turning you down. How can you turn me down when I haven't asked you anything? It's no use arguing. I've made up your mind. Here, let me cut your wings. I've got a headache. I'm going back to my home. No, you can't go. The competition's about to begin. Here's money for dinner. Twenty to go. Wait a minute. All that's in here is a dollar, three dimes, a nickel, and a... What? This is in my purse. I've lost my purse. Poor me. That purse you found? Impossible. I can't imagine you without your purse. It's Van Gilder's.
very swell evening, but I'm afraid we'll have to cut it short. Oh, my God. 
things? There I sat, cooped up in Yonkers for years and years, and all the while, wonderful people like Mrs. Malloy were walking around, and I didn't know them at all. I don't know if you can see from where you're sitting. Well, for instance, the way her eye and her cheek and her forehead meet right here, can you? <laughs> I tell you, a fine woman is the greatest creation of God on earth. Now, you can talk all you like about the Great Pyramids, Niagara Falls. They're not in it at all. Now, of course, I've seen women. But today, I talk to them. <laughs> equal to equal. They're so different from men. And they're awfully mysterious, too. I bet you could know a woman your whole life without knowing whether or not she really liked you. Today, I've lost so many things. My job, my future, anything that people think is important. But I don't care. Even if I have to dig ditches for the rest of my life, I'll be a ditch digger who once had a wonderful day. I missed a few words back there, Mr. Hackle. Right after, it only. <laughs> Hand and whisper so long, dearie, dearie, should have said so long. 
Snuggle up to your cash register. It's a little lumpy, but it rings. Oh, you're partial. 
No, it won't be enough to load your wife up with money and jewels, and insist she be a benefactress to half the town. By the way, it's bad business letting Cornelius open up a shop across the street from you. Better take him back and let him be your partner. Partner? And Barnaby can have Cornelius' old job. Now, hold on a second. That way we'll all be together so we can dance at Army Guard's wedding. That's it, Dolly. You've gone too far. I'll do no such thing. Besides, I don't know how. And it would take me weeks, months, years to... <laughs> all right, I'll dance. My horror is bending out. I never thought I'd hear you say such a thing. That front room, idiot. Go, get to work. My horror is bending out. What is going on up there? Oh, nothing. Just thought I'd have that front room done over in blue wallpaper. Horrors. I know the old paper ain't worn out yet, but that fella's just start up the business. And she's gonna need a good start. You see, Dolly, I've always thought that money part of the expression, is like manure. It's not worth the thing unless... Thank you, Ephraim. Hello, Dolly, well, hello. Dolly, it's so nice to have you back where you belong. I never knew, Dolly, without you. Dolly, life was awfully flat, and more than that was all.